So I'll show you guys what we got going on here. I end up framing this in uh, just real roughly. These boards going across here and here are actually not secured down. You can see, but I'll be able to get in here and put that and I'll have to toenail this end in. Uh, and then we'll have support behind the drywall and we'll have a place to actually put cabinet rails uh, that the mirror will slide on. But the question is, is what size mirror? There's a lot of different sizes out there and until we have something in our hands, uh, I don't want to start framing things in until So we're headed, what's the store called? At Home? A store called, I believe it's At Home and they're supposed to have a whole bunch of housing type stuff so we got a little bit of a journey ahead of us but hopefully they have what we're looking for This is definitely the place to look. I was debating on whether to just use some hinges, um, but I think the route I'm going to take is actually just using some of these uh, drawer uh, slides. And the mirror is 22 inches wide. I need something just a little bit smaller than that, so I end up going with 20 inches. I could do something like 16 or 18 inches, but then there's just less travel, less opening. Um, just something to think about, I guess. So when we were at the store, I went back and forth. They had several little nice art pieces, very similar like size of this mirror. End up selecting this mirror because it's got a four inch frame. So it gives me something solid to be able to connect into. And four inches gives you a lot of leeway as well. I can put hinges on this and actually have a hinge out. Um, do what our, our plan is here and put the drawer slides on here and put that up there. This mirror right here in particular is 22 inches wide. The wall that it's going to mount up on is 30 inches. So I have to pay a little attention uh, when we're getting this all set up and framed in. Uh, that everything's going to be centered onto that wall. The cubby that it's going to end up covering up is 16 inches wide. So um, this mirror will definitely do that. It gives us a little bit of buffer space on both sides. Uh, the mirror is also six feet tall here. So uh, we can have an opening that reaches down to the floor pretty easily where if we had a mirror that just sat up just on the wall, yeah, you could stuff some longer type things on there, but you, you aren't really able to utilize the bottom very well. So just a couple things to think about if you're thinking about doing.
So to give you a rough idea on how I frame things out, you know, so I got two two by fours here going across. I got two two by fours down below. Uh, the main intent of these is to be able to obviously hold the weight of the mirror as it slides across on these uh, door slides. And you know, you hang a picture, you hang a mirror on the wall. Sometimes you just you don't realize what it looks like until you step back and you're, oh, that's a little low, it's a little high. So having two two by fours here gives me the flexibility to make some adjustments as needed. And it's a whole lot easier than trying to figure out how I can secure a, another two by four up, you know, up in some other area after the drywall is already attached. Another thing you'll notice also is I have these boards here. They're, they're boards that I ripped down just a little under three fourths of an inch on uh, the table saw here. Because you gotta remember, I still have to have half inch drywall that's gotta get hung on this wall. And then having these drawer slides, man, these things sit really low. It, it's, it's pretty impressive. Which is a good thing because we want that mirror to be as snug as we can get it to the wall. But like even just right here, there's just a little minor bump. And if you listen here, you can hear it rub in there. It's just a little minor thing. And the fact that we have a corner here, we're going to have to put a, a metal corner piece here so that the drywall doesn't get so dinged up. Uh, we're going to have to do a little drywall mud feathering of that to, to blend that in. So that's gonna, we're going to have to account for that height as well. The other nice part too is about doing something like this is if I ever decide to, to take this out, remove it, um, all I have to do is remove you know, these slides, remove the shims, and I got plenty of space to be able to attach it, uh, another sheet of drywall to and I can then finish mudding that off and just close this all, all off all together. So it's not a permanent thing. So there, one last little thing I guess maybe I touch on. You'll notice right here is actually the center the center to this whole entire area, but it's not actually the center to this opening right here. I tried to offset this opening just a little bit because obviously the plan is to have the mirror slide this way. And a slide I have in my hand right now is for, I believe it's a 16 inch, this is 20. Um, but I guess the, the, the plan is, is if, if, let's say the mirror slides open and there's a little bit of overhang here and it doesn't quite you know open up, I wanted to have a little bit more space exposed here. so. But I think honestly with, with the 20 inch ones, I should have no problem. I think this should open all the way up. So a lot of times when you work on a construction project, it's a lot easier to get things in place than get everything finished up and try to come back and add something on later on. One thing I was thinking about is how could I utilize this space up here a little bit better? Um, especially since we have this all open, one thing we probably could do is put some sort of shelving system or something like that where I could easily stick my hand up here and be able to um, utilize this space a little bit better. So the last thing to get done here is get the drywall closed off in this opening but before we do that we have sort of a tradition around here and uh, this I think I'll stem back from when I was a kid anytime my dad worked on projects closing off walls or doing whatever he'd a lot of times have us write a letter that we could stick in the wall sort of a time capsule. A lot of times it'd be like some of our favorite hobbies things that we did um, I think my dad sometimes would stick something in there saying, you know, why the project happened. And I always thought that was kind of a cool thing. Maybe a future owner could find it somewhere down the road and get a little better idea of why the project happened or uh, some of the planning reasons behind certain things. Uh, a little glimpse at what things were like. I have lived in some pretty old houses in my time, 100 plus year old houses. and. I think it would have been so cool to be able to find something like that. Go work on a construction project, you're ripping down a wall or something, find a little note and get to be able to connect to someone who once lived there or uh, just get a little better idea of what life is like. So we'll go upstairs, I'll uh, get Grace to write up a letter, I'm going to write something here and we'll get that stuffed in the wall before we close things off. What's this? Robot. Robot? What's the robot for? I'm gonna put your valentines in here. Mm -hmm. Mine will get our stuff. We'll get it out of here. And your little hand fits in there? Oh, your mind does. <laughs> 